Hi, and welcome to Journey to Journeyman, episode number seven. First of all, guys, I'd like to thank everyone who commented, gave me positive feedback, gave me tips and tricks. Thank you so much, guys. That is really, really appreciated. I can't thank you enough. And it, it actually gives me more motivation to continue and to see that I'm on some of the things on the right track. So, so thank you. Uh, on this episode, I'm going to make a piece... Uh, I'm going to climb what I call the Mount Everest of hobby machining, when you're especially a, a novice. I'm going to do single point threading. And it's not because I'm trying to do single point threading. I just don't have a die that will, will fit the thing. So the piece I'm going to make is a small little, it's a T-screw. And, and the thing is with this is I learned on the last episode that if I can lock that cross slide down, that it really makes the uh, milling attachment work better. So I took the one out of the milling attachment itself since I wasn't doing a lot of locking, uh, a lot of moving in this axis, the vertical axis, but I was doing stuff in the horizontal axis. So I took their little locking screw out, put it in the cross slide and would lock it each time. And so I thought, man, why don't I make one of those for the cross slide, just like the one that they have on the vertical slide on the mill. And that's what I do. Uh, for those of you who are real, <laughs> Real journeyman, you're going to see the grave error. I made uh, three fails. I thought this was going to be a real simple project. I made three fails before I, I got this right, but the part did turn out well on the fourth try. And so let me show you how I did it. So I made a drawing for reference and then got my order of operations of turn the major, then the mid, then the small diameter, thread the thing, then drill it. Make the small piece, press it in, and then smile for the ladies. Well, unfortunately for me, or fortunately for me, depending on how you look at it, I don't have a die that can cut these uh, 32 threads per inch. So I am now forced to learn how to single point thread. I'm just now setting up the machine with a little bit of um, a die on the end of that set up the gears like they're supposed to according to the chart and now I'm just gonna go across here just to make sure that the, the gears are set up to cut those threads per inch um, as you can see it's going real slow and that's just because of the uh, variable uh, speed that I have on there I don't have any back gears I'm just gonna try to see if the the variable speed has enough torque to do the threads but right now it's just to test, just to see how if, if I got those gears in there correctly. I've got this thing running real slow and you can tell that little clicking going on is just the little place where you put the key in at when it comes around, it's just clicking back and forth. So I take my um, pitch gauge, put it on there, and I'm pretty shocked that it's, it is correct. I got the, the right pitch. So now it's time to turn the diameter down to the correct diameter. So I'm going to face it off here and then start the, the process of getting it down to the proper diameter. Well, I'm taking light cuts here because there's quite a bit sticking out and it's getting thinner and thinner. So I'm just taking very light cuts here. Now that I got the big diameter done, it's now time to just kind of eyeball, get a feel for where the other smaller diameters are going to go. So I mark it up here and it'll be time to start cutting again. Now that the second diameter is correct, time to get the little one up to speed. Well, I don't have a fish gauge, so I took my little Washina square and just thought, just square the thing off, and that should be close enough for government work. So now I do a scratch pass on there and start cutting threads.
but with my real piece here I started it on the zero and then I'll, every time I'm gonna engage the um, the feed on the zero so I'm being very conservative here and taking light cuts To my naked eyes, these threads look great. So, one more pass and let's try it out. Now in my mind, things are going pretty well. I'm pretty proud of myself. These things are looking like gears, not gears, sorry, threads. So it's looking good. Now some of you real good guys out there on machining realize I've made a fatal flaw from day one and there was no way these these um, threads were gonna work and what that is is you know there's a lot of argument on 29 degrees or 30 degrees um, that I see on YouTube well I set mine at 30 the problem is I set mine on 30 degrees from the wrong axis so there was no way this was ever going to work For those of you who are new to threading, you want your threads to look like the top one, but they'll look like the bottom one if you have your compound set wrong because you'll get the correct threads per inch. However, it keeps going in in a different spot on there, and so you get a sawtooth looking thread, and that's, I wasn't noticing that at uh, on these first three. I just thought that I kept missing something and just boogering it up somehow, but uh, it was just jagged threads. Please don't think I'm not analyzing this because I am. I'm just making the wrong analysis. I thought it was the, I just, it was flexing and maybe hitting it at a different spot. So I'm thinking, hey, let's tighten it up and make it a little bit more firm with a center but of course my problem is is the same thing that the compound is set at the wrong angle Well, I'm extremely frustrated by this time. So what I decided to do was just do very, very light plunge cutting. So I didn't use the, the, the compound at all. I just kind of plunged it in a, a thousandth at a time until I um, finally got the threads cut. And I knew that that wouldn't at least do that uh, sawtooth pattern. And then I took the thread file here and just started running along it to um, get it to the right depth and to uh, make sure the threads were nice and clean. And it really, really worked out nice. Now the plunge cutting and the thread file are not the approved solution, but I was just so glad to get that thing to work. I didn't know what to do and I thought I'd try to figure this out later, but at least I got it to work. Now that the threads are good, I'm being real careful. I'm just cleaning up the uh, other piece, getting it cut to length, and going to put the hole in it now for the, the T part to go into it. Now don't despair, these three fails get used. I uh, use, I take it now, one of the fails, stick it in and I'm going to use that to be the little T part of it. I 
I really hate to admit this, but uh, this first one, the little T part I put in there, turns out to be a fail too, because what I did when I polished it there was polished it just a little bit too much and it was too loose of a fit. So I had to use the other fail to make the other one. And then I used red Loctite to keep it in there. The real one's on the left and mine's on the right. Well guys, I'd like to share a couple of lessons learned. Number one, have your mas machine set up correctly. Uh, you know, some people fight over 29 or 30 degrees, but that's cool, pick one, but at least have it to the right axis. I had it uh, <laughs> 30 degrees set to the wrong axis. I have a thread file, and I was able to use that file on here um, to get it to the correct dimension uh, on the lathe, just running it down it. Now, I, I know guys, I've got a book here and it tells you how deep to go. I'm just not that uh, polished of a journeyman yet, <laughs> not even a polished of an apprentice to get that correct. So I would just test fit it, then I would use the thread file on there because I did have a thread file of the right 32 pitch on here and I got it right. Anyway, um, someday I'm going to learn how to do the single point threading to I go to the right depth. So that's, I guess, my next one on the threading thing. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you next time on Journey to Journeyman.